Today's featured story is the true memoir of a Louisiana beekeeper. This is Dan Hobgood of Shreveport Company Bee Goods. He's a beekeeper who sells his honey around Louisiana farmers markets. Here Dan talks about growing up in Bogalusa and his first misadventure in beekeeping. Bogalusa got its start with the Great Southern Lumber Company and it was the biggest sawmill in the world. But during those days, we lived in a place that you opened up the back door and you were in the woods and there was nothing but woods as far as you could drive in a day just about. We lived more like in the summer times particularly, but year round we lived more like what you'd think Indian boys would live, just outside, always outside, always doing something climbing trees, putting ropes in them so we could swing out over a bluff or a creek and drop off. Bogus had an airport, and he was off at the edge of one of the, of the company pastures, we always called it. So we we walked over to the airport. We were going to be really excited. We were going to watch the planes land and take off. Big deal of those days. And if you were lucky, one or two every three or four hours would take off a land. <laughs> And so we'd lay on our back and we'd watch these big cumulus clouds float across and we'd know well, that looks like a buffalo, that looks like a sheep, or whatever we thought they looked like at the time. And as we watched the clouds go by, we started hearing this buzzing sound. And we got interested in what it might be, so we got up and walked over and we saw some bees coming in and out of an old stump. We had both seen beekeepers on TV or in the neighborhood and knew that to get those bees and get to be out and get to the honey that we had to uh, have a smoker and we had to have protective clothing on. We were smart enough to know that. So we ran home real quick and got all our stuff together. We had some cotton mittens that were big holes in the mittens. They'd be not really gloves, they're just mittens put on a long sleeve shirt, and we knew you had to have something for your face, so we found a lampshade, and we stole a couple of cigarettes out of my mother's cigarette box to use as a smoker, and we got, ran back and found a bee tree, and we got all decked out. We put on our mittens and put our long sleeve shirts, because we were shirtless, we always went shirtless. We just put on a long sleeve shirt. We had shorts on. We didn't think about much about our legs back in those days, covering them. So then I took the most important thing, the uh, lampshade, and stuck on top of my head. It, but, and then I, Edwin took, hand me a cigarette. So I got the cigarette lit, and I bent down over the hive, and I gently spoofed blew the cigarette smoke into the hive. We were probably 12 years old. I was probably 12, maybe 11. So we blew that cigarette smoke on the bees and they didn't do too much. And then I took both hands and I reached in there and I pulled the stump apart. And we were eaten alive by bees. And the worst thing is that they flew up under the lampshade. They got inside my nose, they got inside my ears. <laughs> they I must have been stung 70 or 75 times instantly with bees up under in my face. We left the honey intact. <laughs> we didn't get the ounce of honey. And I think, you know, it, 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 and thinking back in those days, we ran and we ran. We didn't stop running until we were in the house. And, and the next day we were unrecognizable as people, our hands and face and legs and everywhere was just swollen. That kind of launched my, I figured that later in life I was a little smarter and I could do beekeeping. So I started beekeeping as you know and the very first time I got my hives of bees I picked up five nukes in Mississippi in Wiggins and I drove back to Shreveport and I set them out and I I knew what you're supposed to do, so I had all my equipment, all my bee suit, but it was just perfectly set up, and I did everything right. I put my nukes in front of the hives that I was going to put them in, 
and started to open the little tabs so the bees could get out and get oriented before I put the, put the frames in the box they were going to be in. And at the very last one, I walked back to the car and I took off my bee suit and I noticed the tab, it's a little tab where you just push open, you pull open so the bees can escape. It had closed back up so the bees in that one frame couldn't get out. So I said, well, I need to put on my uniform again, put my bee suit on to get safe. And I said, no, nah. I'm going to do is get up there and pull that slab and what could they, that tab open and what could they do in, in, the, in the tenth of a second it takes to do that. So I walked over and I pulled the tab open and instantly they stung me all over my face again. They come out really fast. And one got inside my ear and stung me. And uh, and so in, in, in the, and I guess that was probably 50 years in between the two, I still hadn't learned my lesson. <laughs> And somebody, every time I go sell honey in the farmer's market, the funny thing is now to me is that, and I have my pat answer now. I said, do you ever get stung? And I say, I never get stung unless I'm being stupid. And I've never fooled for bees that I hadn't got stung. <laughs> <laughs> This podcast is brought to you by confettipark.com.